Okay, um, hey guys, and today I'm going to show you how you can really easily install some custom firmware on your PC, uh, your PSP. So, first what you're going to need to do is make sure, uh, if you're going to do this, make sure you don't update your PC, PSP too often, but if you go into system information, you'll be able to see which version I got under system software, it says 6.39 Pro slash B10. Um, which is, you need software version 6.20, 6.35, 6.39 or 6.60 to uh, run this custom firmware that I'm going to show you. Uh, I'll put in a, a link into the description for, if I can find one, for the 6.39 or the 6.60 uh, firmware. But I'm going to show you how to do it if you have the right firmware. So firstly, I recommend backing up all your stuff to a hard drive, like by doing it on USB. But first you're going to have to install, you're going to have to copy the files onto your PSP. Now I've just, I'll go on to my PC now and show you how to do that. Okay, so what you want to do now is you're going to download the, uh, the firmware that you need to run. Now you can see, I'll stick a link to this in the description, or you can just copy and paste it, uh, well not copy and paste, but it's live in yourself. But anyway, uh, you can see you got all of the additions for 6.60, 6.39, 6.1 um, and stuff. Uh, I will just use the normal 6.39, we can get 6.60. The uh, top one currently is 6.60. Uh, if you don't have one of these, I can, and you got a lower version, I can always upload a 6.39 version. I think if I can find an update for 6.39 on the internet. Anyway. Uh, you are going to want to run one of these. Uh, I'll do the 6.39. Doesn't really matter which, or oh, it actually does. Uh, yeah, just download it. Just make sure you get the right version, or you could break your whole PSP. Don't want to do that. There we go. Download's complete. Now what you're going to do is you're going to. Uh, well, um, I'm using Linux, so it looks a bit different here. Oh, what's happened to my GUI? Oh, I'm running in the virtual machine, so it's probably a bit buggy. But anyway. As you can see, I've got this here. Now you're going to open it with whatever archive program you use and go back into your thing. Now, this just, this is what a normal formatted uh, memory stick looks like. Uh, you, yours could look a little different depending on what you have on here, but I just have the normal default one. Uh, so basically what you want to do is you just go into your USB, PSP, uh, and game. In here, uh, if you haven't installed any games or anything, it'll be empty. Now you probably want about a few me about five, ten megabytes free. Anyway, you go into your game, and when you go into, you should just be able to uh, just select all of them. You don't need SDK and credit, but you can copy them anyway. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, you just drag and drop all of them into your PSP, into your PSP memory stick, and there you go. It's all done. Now I'll eject my PSP now, and I'll be able to show you what you can do now. Uh, once you've safely removed or properly removed whatever you do to your with your computer, you can just click back to exit USB mode. So now you've done all that, now we need to install the firmware. So we just need to go down to memory stick. As you can see I've already got some uh, ROM uh, games and stuff already on here. What we want to go into is the Pro Update. Now it'll have that nice up background there, so you just press X to run. And there you go, now we'll have to run it'll run like a normal game you got off your and uh, your UMD or your normal card and then you get this little thing here and say press X to launch CSW press triangle to uninstall and press L to reinstall and R to exit so what we want to do is we want to launch CFW so we press X and there you go and then it'll take a second to do something and just uh, it'll go blank and then there you go now it should all be installed. Wait, a good way of checking that is by pressing select. Now, if you press select and get this menu, that means it's installed. This is the uh, the CFW menu, and as you can see, you can change some clock settings and everything. I've already configured this, so yeah, clock set. Uh, I'll t explain some of what it's, what some of this stuff is. Now, the CPU clock XMB is basically how um, fast your menu is going. So if you're running really low on battery. Well then you can clock that down, I wouldn't go 20 by 10 uh, But yeah, let's say, I usually stick it on 133 by 66 if I'm running out of batteries for the CPU clock XMB um, You can do it whatever you want I'll stick it on about, I'll show you how um, 
Ooh, I'll just stick it on 133 by 66 and then you can go down to the bottom and exit and there you go now as you can see there's a little bit of lag now because the CPU isn't running at maximum speed but yeah that's basically what that is as you can see there's some flicker as well going on there anyway the next one is the oh I'm gonna have to reapply normal actually I'll just leave it on default for now default may, means it'll just automatically choose the clock settings uh, depending on what you're doing anyway so now the next one is a uh, CPU clock game. That means if you're running any homebrew software games and stuff, that's how fast it's going. So uh, I usually do it on the maximum clock speed to get the maximum speed. But you can do it whatever you want. Mess around with the clock speed, see what works best for you. A uh, USB device is basically what when you plug it in, what, what runs on it. So flash 0, 1, 2, and 3 is basically your PSP um, internal memory. So you don't want to really mess around with any of that, or else you could break your whole PSP. But... UMD disk is means you it'll um launch well when you uh, connect it there will be a folder and inside that folder there'll just be one I assume an image and that'll be a UMD disk if you want to just pirate any disks or anything I mean I don't use that but I don't know you might want to use that if you want to and this one I have no idea what it does I think what you can do is you can change what like the UMD uh that's the CD like if you want to run a custom CD I haven't tried it yet. Uh, USB video mount, ISO video, same thing really, you can just mount an ISO as you, and it'll think instead of the UMD drive that's what's mounted. Now recovery menu, actually I'm not going to show you recovery menu, it's basically all this except a couple of extra features, it's basically exactly the same. Anyway, shut down device means completely shut it down, well not completely, it won't be like a cold boot but it'll shut down the device, and as you can see it's all shut down, it takes a second to shut down on the PSP. So I can get some light on it though. Now as you can see if we turn the PSP back on again there we go it will, when it loads, load right from the very beginning. Okay so that's basically what that does. Um, if I go select again, basically what the next one down does is if you do, where is it? If you do suspend device, it's not really easy to see because of the background, but suspend device, it's above the one that I've got selected. Uh, basically what that will do is it'll um, uh, basically do what, you turn, what happens when you turn the power switch off. It'll um, completely, it'll just turn it off basically except with a little bit of power running, like when you suspend your device with the game running when you turn it back on the game still there. Uh, yeah, sort of like standby. Our reset device is basically resets all of your settings, I'm not going to do that, and I don't know what reset VSH does, I've accidentally clicked on it a few times and I have no idea. Anyway, if you click exit now, that'll save any settings you've create, uh, changed. Now, I'll show you, now if you cold boot your PSP, like if you've taken the battery out for a while, or it's been out of battery for a while, then you'll have to cold boot it, which will take a second to load up, you have to reset your time settings and everything. Anyway, when you do that, you have to reapply a CFW. Now, there's an easier way to do this. You see how there's three of them in here? don't know why that's doing in the middle, but anyway. Uh, if I go into update there, that's basically from if you don't have the update on there or if you've got an old update and you want a new one. Anyway, uh, fast recovery is what you need to use. So it'll keep all your settings you've uh, got now. I'll show you it quickly. But it'll keep all your settings and it'll only take a second to set up. So this is only if you've... um taking the battery out for a while or something which is cold booting now basically load up like the normal one except it only take two seconds because it only have to like reapply it most of it's already in the memory so it'll go black and there you go done now it's reapplied you can yeah same thing select see if it's applied or not uh, now, is there very much more to cover? I don't think so. That's about it. Uh, if I go into memory stick there, as you can see, I've got some uh, thing. I'll show you. I'll show you Do DOS DOS box, just to show you that my device is rooted and it's not going to ask. It's not well. Usually, I say it's corrupted, but I've completely hacked my device now. So as you can see, if I go any to continue, any key to continue, it'll load this rooted software up like normal. There you go, and that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like or anything if uh, I ho helped you. Uh, leave a comment if you need any more help. Leave a comment if you if I helped you. Just saying thank you if you want to. 
Um, subscribe if you want some more tutorials. I might upload a new one soon. And yeah, goodbye. Oh my God.